What's up guys, it's Patrick from Purple Park Studios and today I'm going to be showing you how you can bring your green screen footage into a 3D environment. In this case, we're going to be using Blender and I'm also going to show you some tips for how you can set up and optimize your green screen footage so that you get real shadows and even reflections. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to bring our green screen footage into Blender. And don't worry, if you don't have any green screen footage, you can get the footage that you saw at the beginning of this video on my Gumroad. I'll leave a link in the description. So in order to bring our green screen footage into Blender, we need to go up here to Edit, Preferences, and under your add-ons, you're going to want to search for Images as Planes. It's a free add-on and comes with Blender. Make sure that's checked. That will allow you to bring your green screen footage, videos, and even photos into Blender. So once you've enabled the add-on, the next thing you're going to do is hit Shift A. And if you go to Image, you'll, you should now see Images as Planes. So we're going to go ahead and click that. So the next thing you'll need to do is search in your computer to where you have your green screen footage saved. Now you're going to want to make sure you key out your green screen footage before you bring it into Blender. So you can either do that in Blender or with After Effects. I'll leave some links in the description for options on how to do it in either program. So I'm going to go ahead and select this footage. And if you went to my Gumroad, you'll be able to follow along with this exact same footage right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. And once I select this, you'll notice over here that we have some different options. If you choose emit, your green screen footage will be emitting light. It won't be emitting a ton of light right off the bat. It's kind of like plugging an image texture into the principled shader's emission. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it on principled for now because I don't really want this footage to be emitting light in this situation. So the next thing I'm going to do is just scroll down here. And it's really important that this blend mode you check to hashed. And also the shadow mode, you want that to be on hash too. And this is going to be really important for getting accurate and real shadows and reflections inside of Blender. So the rest of these settings we're going to leave as is. We don't need to worry about them. And we're now good to go ahead and import our video clip into Blender. So right now we just get a plane and we can't see our video footage. So in order to see our video footage, we can either go up here to our look dev mode and then we'll see we get this flat little plane down here. Or if you want to still work in this uh, in the modeling mode, you can just hit this little drop down arrow and change this from material over to texture. And that will allow us to see the footage. So I'm going to go ahead and select my footage and I'm going to hit R, X and 90. And that'll just rotate it in the right way. So when I hit one on the numpad, it's facing straight up like it should be. So the next thing I'm going to do is just hit G and Z and move the footage up just so that the feet are touching that X axis there. Then I'm going to hit G and X and just center up the footage a bit. From here, I'm going to hit Control A and apply all transforms. And this will make the origin snap from the center of the plane to the 3D cursor. The next thing we can do is hit Shift A, Mesh, and just add a cube. And you'll see this cube is really big. Well, or at least it looks big compared to our green screen footage. So if I hit G, Z, and 1 and move that cube just up so that it's sitting right there along the x-axis, same as our footage. If we hit N and check over here at the dimensions, we'll see that this cube is two meters. Two meters is about the height of the average human. So we can see that our green screen footage is not nearly to scale. So in order to fix that, we can hit S and scale our green screen footage just up to the size of the cube. You can make them a little taller or a little shorter. I'm gonna make mine just about there, pretty close to two meters. So from here, we can just get rid of this cube since we don't need it, but we should select our footage and hit Control A and apply all the transforms. So now that we have our footage in the Blender, we can move it around just like we normally would by hitting G and moving it, G and X to move along the X, G and Y to the Y, and G and Z to move it up or down. You can also hit S to scale and R to rotate it. If you want to know how long your footage is as far as frames, you can select the footage and go to the shading editor. From here, you can go ahead and look right here on the movie clip and you'll see that it is 370 frames. So if you wanted to, you could set it to 370 frames down here. The other thing you're going to want to do is match the project settings to the frame rate of the footage. Now I know that this footage was shot at about 23 frames per second. So if I just select this output here, I can change this over to 23.98, which is the frame rate that I use to film this footage with. So the next thing we can do is we can go ahead and hit Shift A and we'll add a plane into the scene. You can go ahead and scale that plane up 
And we can now see we have our key green screen footage successfully placed in the 3D environment. And if we want, we can hit Shift A and we can add a few cubes just for some depth. Now you could go ahead and build your entire set or whatever you want around your green screen footage, but when you go ahead and start adding lights and things like that, you're gonna find that you're not gonna be getting the shadows and reflections. So you need to make sure that your green screen footage is optimized properly for that. So I'm gonna go over here to my rendered mode here. And you're gonna, you can see it's pretty dark, so we're gonna to need to add a light. So we can hit Shift A and add a light and hit G and Z and move it up, G and Y. And you can go ahead and select this light here and I'm just gonna change the power to like 200. So now we can see that it's pretty bright. So you'll notice that when I move this light around, you can see how that shadow back there is reacting correctly to my green screen footage. And that's good, that's what we want. You're gonna to wanna to go over here to the render properties and turn on ambient occlusion as well as screen space reflections. And this is really gonna help when it comes to adding reflective materials and getting this green screen footage to reflect. For example, if I select this plane here and I go down to my material properties, if I change the roughness here, you'll see that I now have the reflection of my green screen footage on the plane. And likewise, if I take this metallic and turn it up, you'll see now we have a much stronger reflection there with the metallic. And you can always adjust this roughness too. So you can start doing some really cool stuff and we can go ahead and see if we turn off this screen space reflections, all that reflectiveness completely goes away. So you really wanna make sure you have the screen space reflections enabled. Another thing that I like to do with my green screen footage is if I select it and go down to the material properties, take the specular and you can turn that all the way down. And by playing with the specular level, it will help when you're actually going to render out your final scenes and you have all your lights set up, you'll be able just to choose how much specular you want. Like we can see here, my footage looks a bit washed out and unnatural. By turning the specular back a bit, we get a bit more contrast. We can also take this roughness and just turn that all the way up because we don't want our character to be getting any weird reflections or anything like that. So it's always a good practice to turn this roughness all the way up. We can also see that if we select this light and we change the color, it will react properly too with our green screen footage. So we could, you know, give it like a blue color. Now that's starting to look kind of cool. And while we're not gonna get into color grading the footage in this tutorial, I just wanted to show you a few things that you can do when you bring your green screen footage into Blender that will optimize it so you can create cool and realistic scenes within Blender. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.